Welcome to Grace Abounds. I'm Pastor Jen Shaw, and in this podcast, I'm sharing my Sunday sermons from St. John's Lutheran Church, Palm Desert, California. I'm so grateful that you've joined us, and I trust that these words build you up in faith, hope, and love. In his book, Thanks, Dr. Robert Emmons shares four particular ways in which gratitude is healthy and helpful and good. Gratitude allows us to celebrate the present. We appreciate the goodness and value in life, even when it's hard, and this inspires us to participate in this goodness, to share the grace we have received. Gratitude blocks toxic, negative emotions. We can't, for example, feel resentful and grateful at the same time, or jealous and grateful, or anxious and grateful. As the Apostle Paul writes so beautifully in Philippians 4, don't be anxious about anything, but in everything, in prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, make your requests known to God And the peace of God that passes all understanding will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus our Lord. Grateful people are more stress-resistant, more resilient. We suffer in this fallen world, broken by human sin. But gratitude gives us a broader perspective that allows us to process negative life events. And grateful people have a higher sense of self-worth. Gratitude gives us the awareness that someone is looking out for us. Someone has provided for us. Someone cares for us. Someone does. As Jesus demonstrates, in our reading from the Gospel of Luke for today. Luke notes that Jesus and his disciples are traveling in the region on the border between Galilee, a Jewish territory, and Samaria, a Samaritan territory, when they enter into an unnamed village where ten people with leprosy call out to him. These ten people are physically ill. They are suffering from a disease that causes inflammation of the respiratory and nervous system and leads to pain and disfigurement and was considered at the time to be incurable. We know today it can be cured. These 10 were also socially outcast. Luke notes that they called to Jesus from a distance. That's because at the time, Leprosy was believed to be highly contagious. We know today that it's not. And so those with leprosy were kept isolated from those without it. In fact, according to Jewish law, people with leprosy had to wear their clothes torn and their hair disheveled, and they had to shout unclean, announcing their disease when they went into public places. These ten are also ritually impure. If they wanted to worship, they had to worship isolated from others. They could not participate in the service. Imagine the pain and loneliness and isolation of their everyday lives. And so when they see Jesus, they call out to him, Jesus, Master, have mercy on us. They call to Jesus by name. They know who Jesus is. They believe that Jesus can help them. By this point in Luke's gospel narrative, Jesus has healed people with leprosy and restored sight to a man who had been blind and healed a woman who touched the hem of his garment. He has fed thousands on a hillside and calmed a storm at sea and raised a widow's son from death to life. He has declared that his mission 
is to proclaim release to the captives and bring good news to the poor and declare the Lord's favor. Throughout the region, Jesus has been demonstrating God's powerful, healing love. And so these 10 people with leprosy call out to Jesus to have mercy on them, to help them, to heal them. And Jesus does. He says to them, go and show yourselves to the priests. Now, this may seem an odd response to us, but in the Jewish society of that time and place, the priests were not only the religious leaders, they were also what we might call today public health officials. They were the ones who would examine a person to determine if that person had leprosy or another disease that would make them socially and ritually unclean. They were also the ones who would examine a person to see if that person had been healed and was therefore socially and ritually clean. By telling them to go and show themselves to the priest, Jesus is indicating that they will be healed. And as they go, they are healed. They are made clean. That Greek word is katharizo. And it indicates specifically being healed of a disease that made one socially and ritually unclean. Jesus not only heals them physically, he heals them communally. Because of what Jesus does for them, They are able to return to their families and friends, to re-enter society, to worship together with others. They are given a new life of health and restored relationships and possibilities. Imagine that moment for them when they realized they were made well. All ten are cured of leprosy. All 10 receive mercy. All 10 receive help. All 10 are healed. One of them acknowledges it. This 10th person with leprosy saw. He stopped and realized what Jesus had done for him, acknowledged the magnitude of the gift, the experience of grace, and he turned back. He acted differently than the other nine. He changed direction in response to God's grace. He went back to the source of his new life. He thanked God, praising God along the way, sharing what God in Christ had done for him with everyone on his path before he had to shout unclean. And now he was shouting for joy. And he worshiped Jesus. He falls at the feet of Jesus, a posture of praise and adoration and thanksgiving and gratitude, acknowledging who Jesus is and what Jesus had done for him. When Martin Luther was asked about the nature of true worship, he said, the tenth leper turning back. The tenth leper thanked Jesus. And he was, as Luke notes, a Samaritan. In that time and place, generally speaking, Jewish people and Samaritan people despised each other. In their historical past, Samaritan people were Jewish people who had intermarried with Assyrians and other conquering nations. And so while both Jewish people and Samaritan people worshipped Yahweh, the Lord God, they had violent disagreements about where and how to do so, including armed conflicts that took place during the time of the ministry of Jesus. And that would have been especially felt in the border areas between Jewish and Samaritan territory, like the one in which Jesus encounters this Samaritan man who he heals of leprosy. This man who had been marginalized, kept at a distance, not only because of his physical illness, but also because of his national heritage 
and his religious beliefs. He's been kept at a distance in many ways. Jesus notes this as well. He asks the question, were not ten healed? And yet this one, this foreigner, has come back to give thanks. With this question, Jesus implies that the other nine were not foreigners, they were Jewish. And yes, as one of our folks mentioned in our Thursday Zoom Bible study, the other nine are simply doing what Jesus told them to do in going to show themselves to the priests. The point is not so much to critique the behavior of the nine as to affirm the behavior of this one. Jesus is making a point for his disciples then and now. Jesus is teaching all of his followers that God's mercy, God's grace, God's love is open and available to all people all the time, everywhere. Whether or not we think they're worthy, whether or not we think we're worthy, no one is outside of the boundaries of God's boundless love. No one is outside of the circle of God's care. No one is an outcast to God. This Samaritan man who had leprosy was kept at a distance because of his illness, his nationality, his religion, and yet here he is embraced by Jesus, welcomed by Jesus, right there with Jesus, falling at the feet of Jesus. Jesus, the embodiment of the God who made and loves each and every single human being. As Jesus notes, for his disciples. And to this healed and grateful Samaritan, Jesus says, your faith has made you well. That Greek word made well is sozo. And it means healed. It also means saved, rescued, restored. This Samaritan man and his nine companions were already physically healed when Jesus says this to him. Faith is not simply about physical healing. And indeed, in this life on earth, for reasons we often don't understand, Faithful people are not physically healed. Faith is being in relationship with, close to, nearby, the one who ultimately and fully heals us. Acknowledging with our whole being the one who makes us well, trusting with our whole life Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord who lived and died on the cross and was buried and on the third day rose again to life and in so doing healed us, made us clean, restored our relationships with God and each other, gives us new and eternal life, who is with us and for us now and forever and who will one day in the fullness of time come again and heal us and this broken world. In the meantime, as we await that glorious day, as we live in this broken world, as we experience physical pain and feelings of isolation and loneliness and the heartbreak that comes with the sin that damages our relationships with God and each other, we may not always feel grateful and that's okay. There are circumstances and seasons for lament. And I would invite you to remember that gratitude in and of itself 
is healing. Gratitude opens us up to the promises and possibilities of life beyond our present circumstances. Gratitude equips us to face difficult times. Gratitude connects us with the source of all we have to be grateful for, the giver of every good gift, the giver of life itself. And so may we follow the example of the Samaritan man who was healed of leprosy. May we see, stopping to acknowledge God's grace and goodness to us, recognizing all the ways in which we have been gifted by God. And may we turn to God, the source of our new life in prayer in studying God's word, in worshiping together, in being open to the Holy Spirit, in how we live our lives every day. May we thank God, telling all of the people in our lives about what God in Christ has done for us, sharing the good news with all the people on our way. May we worship Jesus, acknowledging who he is and what he has done for us. Professor Alice M. McKinsey shares the story of one of her college students teaching a second grade Sunday school class. And in this Sunday school class, the teacher was teaching the students about the story of Jesus healing the 10 people with leprosy. And the Sunday school teacher asked, how do you think Jesus felt that only one person came back to thank him? A little boy shot up his hand and said, I think Jesus would feel happy that one person came back and thanked him. May we thank Jesus for all he has done for us. May we praise God for his goodness. May we be grateful. Amen. Thanks for listening. Each week's episode is edited by Nick Cox. Music performed by our St. John's Worship Band. Sermons by me, Pastor Jen Shaw. Make sure to subscribe to hear each week's message. If you'd like to know more about St. John's mission to know Christ and make Christ known, to share the life-giving word and do the life-giving work of Jesus, visit our website, stjohnslutheran.church. May God bless you on this day and in all the days ahead.